Welcome to Mental Health Monday. My name is Mick Coyle. Coming up on the programme this week... Talking to people about suicide is a key objective of this campaign. That We have to make it a part of what we discuss because it's a part of us as a species. Looking at that photo, you wouldn't have any idea what was actually going on behind his smile because he looked happy, he looked content, he was very much exactly the same person that we'd always known. You know, I think that everybody has an idea in their head of what suicide looks like, but it's actually not true. And I think this challenges that a lot. And I'll be reminding you how you can make connections with mental health organisations within your community. It's Mental Health Monday. Thanks for downloading the podcast. Thanks for checking out Mental Health Monday this week. Really emotional this one and i hope that maybe if you've been across social media in the last week or so at the time of recording for this one you'll have seen details of calms the last photo exhibition now the uh team that i work with the bauer media organization which has radio stations magazines across the country teamed up with calm to help promote this to make sure that people were seeing it and to change the conversation around suicide and i was lucky enough on launch day to be down in london uh, to go and see this exhibition down at London South Bank. It's really, really powerful and really, really emotional. I'll get some images up on the links to the podcast so you can see this for yourself. There's some video content for that too. And of course, links to the services that Calm have put up with the campaign. Uh, thecalmzone.net uh, is the website to find out more information. There's a helpline on there. At the end of the podcast, I'll include the regular link to all those other services that are available out there. But there's a real hope that this campaign, which focuses on the images, the last taken photos of people just before they died by suicide, I'm talking days and weeks, we hope that that really opens people's eyes to the fact that suicidal doesn't always look suicidal. That's a really, really important message to take home from this week's Mental Health Monday. It's home with the UK's conversation about mental health. Welcome to Mental Health Monday. Uh, my name's Mick Coyle. We're live actually on London's South Bank today for a new exhibition from the Campaign Against Living Miserably. You might know them as Calm. The last photo is exactly as it is uh, described. It's the last images of people taken in the days and weeks before they went on to take their own lives. And those photos have been created uh, into one huge exhibition on the banks of the River Thames. And I've got to tell you, it's really quite something to see. Each of these images shows, for instance, Kieran, 28, a dad with a young child. You've got Sophie, 21, on her birthday, or Peter, 58, who's larking around in a pub. Each of these people went on to, in the next couple of days, take their own lives. Each of these people died by suicide. And what the last photo is about is about saying to people that suicide doesn't have a face that you will recognise from a textbook or from a Google search or someone with their head in their hands. You do not know when someone is feeling suicidal. Any of these images could be on your Facebook group of someone having a great time. And yet each one of them comes with a tragic story, a heartbreaking message. It's a really important conversation that suicide is a conversation we need to have because just to look at someone doesn't let you see that they might be having suicidal thoughts. We've got to open up that conversation, ask people if they're feeling suicidal and really open up that whole issue around our discussions of our mental health, discussions around suicide, smashing the stigma and smashing the taboo. Now, a couple of interviews on the way. Simon Gooding, I've just actually caught him down uh, at the exhibition. I caught up with him at the start of the week. Now, Simon is the CEO of Calm. Now, Simon's a really top guy and uh, this has been a sort of a, a real passion project for him, if you like. Uh, we'll hear from him in a few moments' time. Plus, one of the Calm ambassadors, Amber Gill, you might know her as a Love Island winner, she was here at the launch as well, and uh, she's going to tell us about why she's so keen to get involved and support this campaign. I'll put a link to the images and the calm uh, resources around this at the bottom of the podcast because you really do need to see them. And I'll get a video as well up on social media so you can see what these images are about. But hashtag the last photo and at the calm zone on social media. First and foremost, let's hear from the calm CEO, Simon Gunning, who told me why he was so passionate about this and what he hopes to achieve with the exhibition. Yeah, well, it's something that I've heard, having done this job for five years so many times, which is when we talk about somebody who uh, took their own life, that the, the, the people that 
uh, are left behind will say that it came out of the blue, that it was a complete shock, that quite often the person was the life and soul of the party, they seemed to be fine, everything seemed to be working out for them. And this kind of this happens again and again and again. And at the same time, you see a lot of organizations or a lot of kind of very well-meaning people talking about spotting the signs and trying to give people uh, an, an ability to prevent suicide by understanding its, its imminence. Um, and one of the pieces of insight that we worked up with uh, uh, our, our clinical advisors was that there are just not signs. So often there are no signs to be spotted. Um, and so we wanted to, to raise that um, as an idea, but not in any way create this kind of sense of panic because, oh my God, what about my mum? What about my son? What about my friend? Um, or, or a sense of kind of impotent rage where oh, I don't know what to do about this then. You've given me this awful information. But what we needed to do was make it very clear that suicide can affect anybody. And people don't look suicidal in the way that I would suggest do a quick Google image search of suicidal person and it's everybody has got their head in their hands you know it's it's exactly as you'd imagine that imagery to be look at the imagery in the last photo these people are on the face of it enjoying life maybe they they are enjoying life at that moment and suicide came very shortly afterwards but what we need to be able to do is understand the maintenance of the people around us whether they're feeling great or whether they're feeling awful is is doable is achievable and is something that is very very important in terms of that when people see those images and some of those images as you say look like there's there's my mate having a night out that's what that's what we look like when we're going out or that's what we look like in a photo do you think there's a danger that some people will see that and it'll it'll compound that idea that they'll think well, yeah. How would you know? Like, what what could what can you possibly do if you're if you've got a photo yeah. like this? Well, and and that's the reality of the situation. So when when we understand that as 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 a reality that suicide can affect anybody, we then need to give the tools. And so every part of the campaign, uh, whether that's the physical. Um, uh, exhibition on the South Bank, which is going to be really impressive with, the, with the, these 50 huge images down, down the South Bank, uh, or whether that's the amazing film that has been put together using uh, video, uh, which is just mind blowing and awful and brilliant, uh, whether it's the huge amount of great partners like you um, and in print and in television and in um, out of home advertising, all of those places, it's all about solution. So there are everything has a QR code on it. Everything pushes to our uh, dedicated content uh, on our website, which is about equipping people with tools. We, 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 you, you, you raise the issue and then you provide the solution. And this, one of the key solutions, which I think people are, are reticent and, uh, and perhaps misunderstand is talking about suicide. And that's a very different thing. You know, suicide and mental health, they're not the same subject. They, they sometimes, you know, they bend diagram, but they're not the same subject. And I, I think I mentioned I've done this job for five years. And as I come to say the word suicide, there's a little teeny tiny handbrake comes on in my mind still, even with doing this job. When we allow it to stay in the dark, we allow it to prosper. When we bring it out into the light, it doesn't like it. And talking to people about suicide is a key objective of this campaign. That we have to make it a part of what we discuss because it's a part of us as a species. It's it's such a huge a huge issue, and I wonder whether or not if you do see these images and you do look at that, each person will kind of see something a little bit different because, of course, the, the images, of course, are all different. But everyone's perception or everyone's point of view of suicide where it comes from how you perceive it will be slightly different as well so i think that's going to be one of the interesting reactions how do you think people will respond when they see the pictures i i think one of the well for me one of the overwhelming out the takeouts of the the images and of the film uh are that they they don't comply with what we think suicide looks like i mean i'm sorry that is absolutely obvious isn't it but but they humanize these people, they're, they're just instantly likable because they're like us. You know, they're, there's um, actually what somebody in the, in the, in the film ha bears a, a physical re resemblance to my son, which, which I, I find very, very jolting. But it's so important that we understand that people that die by suicide are not over there somewhere. They're not the Google image 
uh, results. They're not, it doesn't happen to other people. It happens to us as a society. It happens to us as groups of friends and colleagues and teammates. It happens to us as families. And so, yeah, the, the, the perceptions of each individual, I think is very, very, it's devastatingly sad, but it's also incredibly powerful because they're us. They're not something else. They're us. You can completely understand if a family member lost a loved one to suicide that they would sort of you know, close the front door and, and, and decide, you know, to, to live in, you know, their own world. And yeah. yet so many have come forward with these images, these bittersweet images, you know, that, and they speak, the, the, the families who put that forward, they speak proudly of the person who's in that photo. And yet that photo is the last photo. So there's incredible strength in, in the families getting involved in no. this and, and laying out their own it's an inspiration the whole way through it they're, they're absolutely incredible one of the thing that the, 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 i think the most fierce supporters of calm are people who have been tragically bereaved by suicide and their motivation is almost always the same they don't want anyone else to experience what they've experienced and that, that i mean that is it's it's hugely inspiring to, to see these people who have suffered the worst thing in, in the world, I mean, I, I, I can't think of anything worse, but, you know, kind of losing your, your child, for example, must be the most terrible thing to have to live with. Yet to turn that devastation through anger into motivation and a willingness to, to put that picture on, in, into the national conscience, where a huge issue over the years has been the shame that's associated with suicide, people crossing the road to avoid the, the, the families left behind. You know, the, 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 we still carry this idea as a society of, of suicide as being, well, I mean, the whole term commit suicide comes from it when it was criminal. Um, and there's, there are still elements of that, the, the, the whole taking the easy way out kind of thing that, you know, you still see in scripts and stuff. These people are just absolute superheroes in coming out of that darkness and trying they're only trying to help other people you know that's all they're trying to do and and actually uh, i can almost feel myself going a little bit because the that they've also expressed throughout this very long process this has been going on for a long time um the, the campaign putting it together they've they've expressed recently as we come to the end that They've, they've found it inspirational themselves and they've, they've, they've taken some joy from it, which is just a, a wonderful thing. Absolutely, absolutely. And I guess as well, the way that they then talk so uh, positively about the conversation around suicide, what we need to do, I guess, as a society is, is, is shift that to the everyday Joe or Joanne who has not been affected by suicide, and I'll say not been affected by suicide yet, that that conversation as an openness to say yeah let's talk about this this is a really important issue because it affected us we that that's what i think where we're at in terms of that conversation just to pick it up and place it on the other side of a line which means that people then talk in a preventative way rather yeah. than a, a reactive way yeah, Mick, it's, it's 125 people a week and every suicide affects more than 140 people it's 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 massive impact on society. The COVID has maybe slightly twisted our perception of numbers in, in, that, in that kind of context. But 125 families, groups of friends, groups of colleagues, teammates, mates, you know, are affected. This is, it's, it's again and again and again. And we, at, at Calm, I think have now really sharpened our focus on the fact, as you exactly put it, we've got to pick it up and move it over a line. We have to talk about it. It's 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 like there's there's a tumor and we're not going to the doctor. We're just ignoring it. We're just thinking, well, if I don't look at it, it won't it won't get any worse. And the truth of it is that if we do look at it, if we do talk about it, it will get better. We will be able to prevent suicide by talking about suicide. No, I did, I Simon Gunning, there, Calm CEO, uh, here live from the uh, banks of. The River Thames today at the Calm The Last Photo exhibition. Simon is the boss, but the real sort of true heroes of this exhibition are the families who've come forward and so bravely spoken about their experiences and offered up these photos and images so that we can see what their loved ones look like. And again, to show that suicide doesn't have a face, that this could be anyone at any time. 
and it's a conversation we absolutely need to have. And some of the families shared the story about why these images were selected by them. In the photo, Dad's got a big smile on his face. There were no signs at that time to say that four weeks later he would then go on to take his own life. You can almost feel the happiness that was radiating from him, yet deep down inside he was desperately trying to hide from the world how he was really feeling. And looking at that picture, he was doing a very good job. My dad, on the outside, to a lot of people, was very happy, very content with life, he was doing really well, so outgoing. Maybe looking back now, everything wasn't as it seemed. I think he was fighting a lot of battles internally that we couldn't see. That photograph is him looking happy, looking straight into the camera and smiling. We love it because that's Alex and it, he, he looks just like we remembered him happy, full of life, full of future. Looking at that photo, you wouldn't have any idea what was actually going on behind his smile because he looked happy, he looked content, he was very much exactly the same person that we'd always known. The last time I saw him was in the canteen at UEA exactly a week before he died and he was about to go to a lecture and he just said, I love you mum, my pretty mama and those were the last words he ever said to me. Just absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, testimonies there from the families here. I'm looking at a picture of Chris, 44. He's posing with a, a T-Rex. Chris, sadly, no longer with us. Adam there, uh, laughing and joking. He's got a flower in his hair, 18 years of age. Uh, Josephine, 67 years of age, died by suicide. She has got the face of someone who you would work with, who you'd live next door to. Absolutely, it's a real tragedy. And those families, a huge credit who've been left behind to share these images and, and share those stories, to tell the stories about suicide. I mentioned there's been a lot of celebrity support for the last photo exhibition, among them Amber Rose Gill. She won Love Island. Uh, she joined me and I caught up with her at the start of the week uh, to hear a little bit more about why she was supporting this campaign and how she responded when she saw it for the first time. When I first went up to it, I, I, thought, I sort of didn't know how to feel. It was just, it was really emotional um, and so powerful. And yeah, I was just really overcome with quite a lot, like a lot of different emotions when I first saw it. Um, and yeah, it was, it was, it's really beautiful to be honest. It's really, really beautiful. I suppose the whole point of the, the last photo is designed to challenge us, isn't it? To think, well, you know, would you have spotted a, an issue in someone like this? And I guess when you're presented with an image of someone then, and know that within days or weeks, they went on to take their own lives. It, I think yeah. it's it, it's supposed to make us feel a little uncomfortable, and I think that's important, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think there's nothing wrong with feeling uncomfortable. I think in in this day and age, we have to put ourselves in uncomfortable positions in order to make sure that everybody's, you know, um, aware. Because I don't think that people are aware. You know, I think that everybody has an idea in their head of what suicide looks like, but it's actually not true. And I think this challenges that a lot. Um, it's really important to sort of show things like this, because then it's like, actually, this person was a ha happy, this, was per this person was happy, friends and family, they're just normal, like they're just like a normal person. It's, and it's sort, of, it sort of lessens the detachment, I think, because I think there's a certain detachment, like, oh, we think that someone um, that would commit suicide would look, you know, down or depressed, or they wouldn't be very happy or whatever. And it's just not true. Um, so I think that challenges that massively. It goes to show as well, doesn't it, about how we're sort of programmed to see suicide or view suicide as, as a certain thing. And I guess that's come from sort of incorrect portrayal in, in the media or just sort of lack of education around it. Yeah, and I, and I think that that creates the stigma as well. I think because people have this thing that they've made up in their mind of what they think something is, um, that makes it harder for people to open up and speak about how they're feeling because there is this sort of bubble around it where somebody might not feel comfortable to share, share like to share that with their family and friends. And I guess that's the, the, the thing about what we take forward from this about how we have those conversations. Have you, as you've sort of become more sort of mental health aware, what, what have those sort of experiences been like for you in terms of trying to get that conversation right and trying to encourage people to sort of engage with it? It's really difficult, um, but for me, I find the way I've just, 
I've just decided with my platform, I'm just going to be real. I'm going to be honest. And I don't want to paint this picture that I'm perfect because then I think I'm putting out the wrong message to people. So I think along this journey of becoming more aware, I've just decided what I put out there is more authentic, authentic as well. And with us doing that, there's less pressure as well. So I set, kind of felt relieved of the pressure. Okay, I don't have to be perfect because nobody expects me to be now. And then I just find it easier to share things. Um, and I think I think social media has a big part to play in that. You know, it has a huge part to play. Um, but yeah, for me, it was just about being my authentic self. I'm human. And there's nothing impressive about being perfect. To me, I don't think there is. And, and and how do you think people have responded to that? And how do they respond to a post where it shows the real you as opposed to sort of the sort of uh, photoshopped version or whatever it would be, the, the, the filtered version? People love, people love that from me and that's what they expect from me now. And I think that people think that I'm their friend and I'm glad I want them to think that, you know. <laughs> um, I don't think that the thing of me is like this, you know big personality or celebrity or influence or whatever it's just like oh it's my mate amber posting photos of like whatever the hell she's getting up to at the minute uh which is nice it's quite freeing um to be in that position because i know there's other people um that are in my, within my industry that sort of feel a real pressure to sort of be perfect sure sure and you can kind of understand why because it feels like in a day where you know the wrong saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing and you you can lose that uh, sort of influence uh, or people can you know switch off from you so you can can kind of understand that pressure particularly you know when the, we're in this sort of, sort of fickle social media world at the same time let's come back yeah. to the, the 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 last photo um exhibition what do you think people will take away from it when they go and see those images i think i think it just brings a sort of connection in a way um like i said it's lessening the detachment away from it but i think that for me, and I hope for everybody else, that it'll just challenge them to rethink and reframe their thinking around suicide. And that's what I'd like to hope to see. And that's what I hope will happen. But that's kind of what happened to me. Um, but I think because I work with calm, I sort of know already, I kind of was on that path already of knowing. Um, so yeah, I really, really hope that people come away from that and think actually I need to reframe my thoughts around suicide. And I think, in people doing that it'll just lessen the stigma and open the doors for it to be a conversation an obviously, easier conversation absolutely absolutely and obviously working with Carmen sort of getting sort of educated on on mental health I, I was sort of surprised when I was growing up how quickly you had to be aware of suicide because it wasn't just something you heard about on tv it was something that was happening either within mm -hmm. families or within local friends groups as well I just wanted yeah. to get sort of your take on that because it is a very real issue and people have got a lot of first-hand experience around it so there's no point not talking about it now when it's a you know something which is now impacting on on people's lives yeah yeah I totally agree and I know it's, it's sort of a hard hard conversation to navigate I understand what I spoke to some of the um friends and family that submitted the photos at the campaign and it was really nice and I just listened and I let them speak and you, you don't have to put too much pressure on yourself to know what to say or ask any questions. I think just being a listener is a lot as well. I think it's, um, yeah, I think because they knew I was, you know, I was there to support the campaign. They just spoke to me really candidly about everything and I, and I really appreciate that actually. I come away from it sort of feeling I don't know, I just felt really emotional, to be honest, but in a, in a good sense, um, because we're trying, to, we're trying to make change for the better, aren't we? So, yeah, but I felt really, really emotional after I came away. And that's one of the things I touched on with, with Simon Gunning, the, the, the CEO of Calm. I was saying that we need to get the conversation about experience of suicide almost out of the hands of those who've experienced it firsthand and into the mainstream population. There's, there's a thin line, but those who've had to cross the line have experienced terrible, terrible tragedies. But mm -hmm. those who haven't crossed the line yet might at some point cross the line and, you know, and, 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 and we'll have to know a lot of information. We'll have to take on a lot of information as well. And that's a lot to ask of, of anybody. But we've got to start that conversation soon, haven't we? Yeah, definitely. I think the conversations like just need, need to start now, really, because then. Yeah, like I said, it, it, it helps in, in 
sort of prevention as well you know like just with it not having such a a, a big sort of negative energy around it or like negative connotations or stigma around it it'll just be good it'll just be good as as a for the good of everyone is basically what I'm trying to say for the good of everyone you know it'll open up conversations if people are feeling that way it'll open conversations for sort of family and friends to have conversations with other people you know um one of the things that I did see that I really liked about the campaign is it really did bring people together because I was looking at some of the friends and families that um were connecting around their photos and explaining um and that was really really nice to see and I was watching that and I thought that was really um it was as if it was like a safe space um and I really like that and I just want that for ev everyone to feel like that you know especially like you say in mainstream media it's important absolutely and, and some stats that came out as part of the campaign were based around the fact that you know more than half of us don't know what to say to someone when it comes to their mental health or wouldn't know to ask if their friends were suicidal and yeah that question are you suicidal is a mm -hmm. question that that now all the experts say we we should sort of work into our our conversations that we shouldn't be afraid to mention the word suicide because in not mentioning it um you might be you know um, preventing a, a door from opening to someone who might otherwise talk about it and say actually i am feeling that way can you help me in some way shape or form I think it all happens with baby steps i don't think it's this huge jump where all of a sudden you don't know anything and then now you feel so confident i think it's just taking small steps like you know um going to look at the campaign and just 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 sort of getting more knowledge around in the situation but i think it's all about baby steps and i think in doing the baby steps then that's what's going to create like a bigger change um within sort of the wider world in the mainstream media people shouldn't really pressure themselves to now all of a sudden feel like yeah i need to be an expert but just take those steps that are slightly uncomfortable but just small steps that are just going to help to make that big change can i share, just finally just in regard to, to love island um i was talking to um tyler tyler crookshank uh, a few yeah. weeks ago and it, it's interesting how a show which is based on you know the format of love island has actually become a focal point for this discussion around suicide and actually a lot of the former contestants given what's happening to what's happened to, to to some of the um the former contestants as well you guys have become really strong sort of mental health ambassadors and sort of advocates as well it's maybe a role you weren't expecting to to take on but i guess sort of life's thrown that at you yeah, it definitely wasn't a role that I thought that I would be taken on or that I would be an ambassador for a charity like Calm. I'd never, ever thought that um, because before I went on the violent, I was sort of oblivious. You know, I was just oblivious. It wasn't really something that people talk about. Oh, I feel like this and I feel this sort of way or like, what can I do? It was just like, you just get on work. That's it. Like, it wasn't really a, a thought in my brain. Then after I came off Love Island, it was really interesting because um that's when I felt like I was started to suffer um a, a bit more like that's when I started noticing my sort of anxiety and things like that um and then so naturally it just sort of flowed because I felt like I had more experience and I had a platform that it just became that way um but I wouldn't have it any other way I think it's really important and I and when I was younger I would have liked to have someone like us talking about these things because it's okay to talk about you know which we, it just wasn't the thing like it just wasn't the thing and actually i think generationally there'll be a younger generation now who will grow up in that world where they're they're sort of celebrities or the peoples they look up to have always talked about this i went into i always remember this i went into a school and i did this talk about like stigma and they were going like yeah. why do you keep talking about stigma and i was saying because this is the thing that's been holding us back on they're going yeah but i didn't know there was a stigma but now you've told me there's a stigma Maybe it's made me wonder whether or not I can talk about it in the open world. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's completely the wrong thing there. But I was framing that around my ex, because no, nobody, had, mental health didn't exist. There were like lunatics yeah. or madmen. There was yeah. that sort of stuff. Or yeah. there was like people dying by suicide was like, you'd hear a rumor about somebody like, but no, yeah. one, no one would talk about it. And no one would go, well, why, what happened? What do we need to know is, does the family, none of that took place. It's all yeah. actually this new generation, I think, are growing up where they're going, well, you can talk about this stuff now. Yeah. And it's yeah. and it's the norm. 
yeah, it's in the knowledge they how do I really feel and be honest? And I think it's so important. It's so important. Because when I was younger, I probably did have anxiety, but I didn't realize what it was at the time. I didn't know. I had no idea. So I think it's it's important, especially for the younger generations, to be really self-aware and like just look after yourself and take care of yourself because now you know, you know, I was struggling in school and I didn't I didn't know what the hell was wrong with it. I thought I was just a bit weird. So yeah. It's important, but hopefully that's what will happen throughout the generation. And then we'll just be co- conversing about every topic with no stigma. I'd like to hope. <laughs> exactly. But with baby steps, as you say, you know, it's it's baby steps definitely. towards that. Definitely, definitely. Well, Amber, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. And thanks for speaking to us. Thank you. Thank you. That's Amber Rose Gill uh, from Love Island. Thank you for her time as well. Uh, what I'll do for you this week is put a link to the Calm website on the bottom of the podcast so you can check out uh, some of the content around it. The images you'll find all over the social media as well. Hashtag the last photo. And thanks so much to Calm for partnering with us uh, to really tell this story. It's been really powerful. I think it's struck a chord with a lot of people as well that you do not recognize or you do not know if someone is having suicidal thoughts. They can look like you or I. They look like any of the people in these photos. The last photo. And thanks for your time. Thanks for checking out Mental Health Monday this week. I hope you've enjoyed this week's podcast. Thanks for checking out Mental Health Monday. My name is Mick Coyle. You can find me on Twitter at Mr. Mick Coyle. You can also find me, Mick Coyle, on Facebook as well. Don't forget, if you want to speak to somebody about your mental health, you can do so. The Samaritans, uh, free to call on 116 123. You can find mental health services where you are. Just look for the Hub of Hope. Type in your postcode. It'll find those mental health services close to you. And for support in a crisis, you can text SHOUT to 85258. That's if you're experiencing a personal crisis, uh, you're unable to cope and need support. Uh, Shout to 85258. That's a text line. Do get involved in those services. In an absolute emergency, always remember the number to call is 999. Thanks for downloading the podcast this week. We'll be back next week with more Mental Health Monday.